the gospel of the Lord. Most of you here know me, and so you know that part of my life history is that I was a chaplain in the most maximum security prison in the state of California, Pelican Bay Maximum Security State Prison. For three years, I visited the inmates there. And I will never forget meeting a young man during one of my masses there when I talked about the baptism of Jesus, when the heavens opened and when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, God the Father declared, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. In other words, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I take delight. I am pleased with him. I take pleasure in him. I am happy with him. God said, I savor you. I relish you. That's what Jesus heard in the beginning of his earthly ministry. And he remembered this when the Pharisees, the scribes, and all the religious people pointed fingers at him and said, you are no good. You are from the devil. You are unlovable. You have made all these mistakes. You are this and that. When they pointed fingers at him, Jesus remembered what God his Father declared over him. You are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. And I said to the inmates what I want to say to each and every one of you today, that the very same thing that happened at Jesus' baptism happened at your baptism. The heavens opened and God, your father, God, your daddy, declared over you, you are my beloved son, my beloved daughter. With you, I am well pleased. After the Mass there at the prison, one of the young men came up to me and said, I hated everything you said today. Because it's not true, he says. Nobody has ever been pleased with me. And least of all my father. It's no wonder this young man ended up in a prison, incarcerated for life, because he was never blessed. The word blessing is from the Latin bene dicere. Bene, good, dicere, speak. Good talk. To bless someone, you say good things to them. That's what the Bible says. Say only the good things men need to hear. So when you tell somebody you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are good, you are blessing them. When you tell them you are no good, you are cursing them. That is what the devil does. The devil accuses us. The devil from the Hebrew Hasatan is the accuser, the one who tells you you are ugly, you are fat, you are this, you are that, that. that those are all thoughts from the devil. And we participate in this when we curse other people with our tongue. It's wonderful when people come and say to me, you know, Father, I have no sins. I don't need to go to confession. I haven't killed anyone. Oh, you haven't killed anyone with your tongue? The last time you talked to your spouse and you called them names and four-letter words? or your siblings, or your children, you curse people like when a five-year-old is playing and they, they're playing and they have all of this energy and the mother all of a sudden when that five-year-old breaks something says, look at you, you're a klutz. And that five-year-old is cursed. And they remember that for the rest of their life. Psychologists have said that. We are to bless people. It's no wonder this young man ended up in prison because he had nobody in his life to bless him. Why do you come to church? You come to church to be blessed, to have me tell you how wonderful you are, how beautiful you are, how good you look, that you smell good. You know, okay? We all need that in our life. 
I like it when people say, Father, you smell good. And I took my weekly shower. <laughs> you know, I grew up in Poland. Yeah, we, when I was growing up, we had to take our weekly bath, whether we needed it or not. Once a week. I was always the first one because I was the youngest. I got the fresh water. <laughs> but we are to bless one another. Do you do that in your life? And do you experience that? You know, all he heard, and I got to know him, his name is Robert, his entire life was how horrible he was how unhappy people were with him, beginning from his parents to the police to the judge. And I looked at him as I want to look at each and every one of you, and I told him what I want to tell you today. I said to him, I am pleased with you. I am happy with you. And I said to him, I love you. I'm here, aren't I? And after that, this young man, incarcerated for life, who was suicidal, because you know, that's what most of them, they think about their whole days, how to take their life. He began to draw. This is one of the pictures that he draw, drew for me. And you can see it on here. If you want to see it after, it says Pelican Bay unit, the unit number and all that. And this is just one example. I have a bunch of letters here from him and others. They continue to write to me. I blessed him and to this very day he's doing very well because he was blessed. Have you experienced blessing in your life? That's why we come to church. You know, in the story of the Good Samaritan, we always focus on the Good Samaritan or on the man who was robbed. But I want to focus on something else. You know, the Spirit speaks to me. And I pray about the readings all week. And it hit me. Nobody ever preaches about the inn. We never focus on the inn in the story. The hotel, you know, the, the place that, that the Samaritan took. The man who was robbed and left for dead. This is Jewish territory. Welcoming a Samaritan. Samaritans had nothing to do with Jews. They were less than dogs in the Bible. Look at the book of Exodus. Samaritans were not even worthy to eat roadkill according to the book of Exodus. Jews, those were their number one enemies. A Samaritan was welcomed by the innkeepers, Jewish innkeepers, with a half-dead man which would have rendered the whole place and all of the people there unclean. And yet they welcomed, irrespective of what their religion said for them to do. Their religion said, no, reject them. Reject the Samaritan and reject the half-dead men. And that's how often the church acts. And I'm not just talking here about the Catholic church or the church in general. I'm talking here about the church which is your house. Because your own home, your family is a domestic church. Is it a church that welcomes all and that bandages up the wounds of the people in your life who sustain wounds to the robbers out in the world that leave them with scars and are you and your family your home the place where people receive medicine for their woundedness where are people's wounds on the inside what did the good samaritan who is the good samaritan in this story it's jesus we know that he's called a samaritan John 8, 48. Very easy to remember. You could look it up. I'm sure you all will. Okay? You know, it says, they call him the Samaritan. 
a derogatory term. And Jesus takes the man left for dead with scars and he pours oil on his wounds and wine. What is it that we do in the Catholic Church for your own wounds? We give y'all oil, don't we? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have oil right there for you to pick up after Mass. For you to use every day. That's what we do. I just gave Ray some wonderful oil that I had. Uh, he's very close to me, so, uh, and he's going through some health problems, and I gave him some oil that I had from Padre Pio's uh, monastery. But I have other types of oil over there for each and every one of you. And then what do we do at Mass? We inject wine. Wine in biblical terms was medicine that they poured on people's wounds on their, when they got injured. Where's your injury? You've been injured by people who've slashed you with their mouth, who've killed you with their tongue. Where are your wounds? You know, you've been told you're no good, you're this because you've been divorced so many times, you know, and all that, right? You know, all the people, they like to talk. Huh? And where are your wounds? They're on the inside. And you inject wine, which is who? Jesus himself for our woundedness. So it's the in. This is what I want to create here at Divine Mercy Parish. The in, the church, where all are welcomed, not judged, not rejected, not questioned where wounds are bandaged up, where you are given a pillow to lay your head on, wine and oil poured by the Samaritan on you. Huh? So is your church, your heart, I'm asking this in this homily, this is, I'm, I'm ending, you know, this is the Catholic Church, so, you know, um, homilies are very short, sermons are very short, well, generally, unless it's with, Father Adam. <laughs> but let's just say after I end and you have, haven't had enough, raise your hand and I can start all over. <laughs> no, I'm about to get done. But this is the final question to all of you. Okay? Is your in, is your in, which is your heart, a place where all the wounded people are welcomed? Or do you signal people? as sinners, less than wrong. Huh? Do all the people in your life find an in, in you? Hmm? Are you one of those who before you receive communion say, Lord, my neighbor's not worthy to receive you. Hmm? But only say the word, or do you say, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. I'm asking a question, answer it for yourself, okay? This is not, a museum for saints here. This is a hospital for wounded sinners. That means you. All of us. <clears throat> so your children or your spouse or your family members, your friends, they're not stupid. They know if they are doing right or wrong. They have a conscience, a voice in them that tells them if they're doing right or wrong. Your job in their life is not to point out their faults and failures, but your task is to love them. And your kids who don't go to church or say they are atheists or agnostics, as long as they are connected to you, the Samaritan, the, 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 maybe the outsider there, the Jesus, the body of Christ, they are connected to him. Jesus has no other body than yours. And so as long as the people in your life are connected to you, they are connected to Jesus. But if your judgmental behavior and your judgmental attitude pushes people away, especially through your mouth, then you are pushing them away from Jesus. In Jesus' time, in God's time, God will touch them and bring them to himself. Your job is to, through your the way that you are, take example from the way that I am. You know, I'm always lots and lots of love, kisses, you know, all this, okay? You know, keep people connected. 
Because as long as people are connected to me, they are connected to Jesus. Because I am his body. Mm, beautiful body, okay? <laughs> so keep them connected to you. And in that way, they remain connected to Jesus. And Jesus will find them in Jesus' time. Stop telling your children they need to do this or that or be this or that. They are all that. You know why? Because they are yours. Make sure they know you take delight in them. That you're happy with them. Huh? Oh, they know it. But they need to hear it from you. Huh? They've sustained a lot of wounds in the world through all the devils that are out there trying to kill them. Huh? A lot of peer pressure. Why are all of the young people cutting themselves? Suicidal, depressed, and all that, right? You know, they have a lot of pressure out there. Don't be one of those that adds more pressure. Don't do it. Hmm? You are my beloved child. With you, I am well pleased. Hmm? So stop fighting, in other words. It's the feast of brotherly love. Stop fighting with your sibling. You know, stop it. Hmm? Zip it. Hmm? You know why you need to put up with the people in your life, like your husband? You know why you need to put up with your husband? Because he puts up with you. <laughs> hmm? Stop telling your children about God and religion and faith. Talk less to your kids about God and religion and faith and talk more to God about them. Hmm? Talk less to them about God and more to God about them. Hmm? If God can move mountains, can't God move little, a little heart? Where's your faith? Jesus, I trust in you. Give them all to Jesus. Your job is to love them. And when you do that, when you bless people, then miracles happen. Miracles like in the life of Robert. Hmm? Who, because he felt loved, cherished, accepted through me, as I hope each and every one of you does too, then felt the acceptance of Jesus and drew him. And let's stand as we profess our faith.